Real McCoy. Starring Walter Brennan and Dick Crenna. Created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoy. From West Virginia, they came to stay in sunny California. That's Grandpa Amos and the two looking boys. His favorite grandson, McCoy. Want you to meet the Pino, the family's higher end. And that's old George, who lives next door. A friend and neighbor you met before. Together they share all the sorrows and joys of the family known as the Real McCoys. worry about me. Don't worry about you. Why, the whole studio is frantic. What do you mean running out like that? I'm fed up. I'm just not coming back. I've had it up to here. <laughs> Tina, listen to me. You just cannot walk out in the middle of a five million dollar production. I'm sorry, Jerry. Tina, do you know what you're doing? You have no money. What with your taxes and your charge accounts, you're broke. Flat broke. I don't need any money. I'll get a job or something. A job? What would you do? Oh, honey, you've never worked a day in your life. I watched people work. It doesn't seem that hard. The studio's going to have the police look for you. Police? Yes, the police and the sheriff and the Swedish consul. The president of the studio and his private helicopter. <laughs> uh, he's so mad at you, he would never forgive you if he could afford it. <laughs> I know they're going to find you. I don't think so. Goodbye. Hey, Grandpa, look at that car. Some kid must have left it there. No, <laughs> it's a real car. Hey, maybe it's a housekeeper answering our ad. Well, it's about time one showed up. You know, this place is sight. Every dish in the house is dirty. Yeah, I'm down in my last clean shirt. No, you ain't, Luke. I'm wearing it. <laughs> well, we sure do need a housekeeper, all right. I know, but make believe it ain't so now, because she's liable to take advantage of us and ask us for more than we can afford. Of course, if we pay her what we can't afford, we'll be taking advantage of her. <laughs> oh, oh, I was knocking and there was no answer. And the door was open. Well, we was out in the barn. We never heard you. Yeah. Oh, I'm Luke McCoy, and this is my grandpa. How do you do? I'm Luke. I'm Tyler. I was looking for a place with a telephone. Oh, we got a phone. Yeah, and a carpet sweep and just about anything else you need. Oh, you're very kind. If you'll just let me stay for a short while. Well, no, not so fast. We ain't even offered you the job yet, you know. Job? Yeah, well, you're here about the housekeeping job, ain't you? Oh, the job. You want me to work here? Well, now, wait a minute. We have to meet on it first. You know, she talks kind of funny, don't she? You know, Rick, she's from the valley here. Probably come from up east someplace. Huh? Oh, that's Swedish. I heard that kind of talk in a television movie once. And I can tell you right now, look, she just ain't gonna work out. Well, she looks real good to me. No, she's too scrawny and soft-skinned and... Look at them spindly shanks on her. <laughs> yeah. Four days work and she'd come up lame on us, Luke. <laughs> oh, we're, we're desperate. We need some help today. Now, let's just, let's just give her a chance. No, Luke, I don't think... Well, all right. <laughs> well, now, you yeah. understand, Dean, every woman has a privilege of waiting on a McCoy and... There's two of us in this house. Yeah, hey, that makes it kind of a, a double honor. <laughs> See, now you get your room and board and 
twenty-five dollars a month? I'll take it. You will? Immediately. I'll get your satchel out of the car. My car. Would you mind putting it in your garage? Oh, sure. Put it around back at the barn, Luke. Then if you can get yourself into it. <laughs> well, now, seeing as how this is the first day, we're going to start you out kind of slow. You can just do the ironing and mop the floors and do them dishes that's in the sink. And, and seeing as how this is Tuesday, uh, we'll have uh, hog jowls and harmony. Hog jowl and what? A harmony. And you'll find the recipe in Granny's cookbook. It's in the kitchen there in back of the cookie jar. Oh. I should have said $20. <laughs> It's done all right. Oh, good. Is there anything more I can do? No, no, no. no. <laughs> You've done enough already. Mr. Luke, can you keep a secret? Well, sure. This is the first hog jowl I've ever cooked. No. Well, you sure could have fooled me. <laughs> I haven't been so excited since the first time I made a smurgos boot. <laughs> well? Yes, I'll serve it. Yeah, uh, Grandpa, are you hungry again? Yep. You, you, you know, you're getting downright fat. Well, your suspenders ain't done a lick of work in months now. Well, you got to store up, Luke. You know, there's a, a lot of winter coming. <laughs> well, look, if you're that hungry, why don't we just hop in the car and go out to supper? Luke, where's your manners? After this poor little girl are cooking hard all day, that'd be downright insulting. Besides, I'm looking forward to a good home-cooked meal. <laughs> <laughs> Still got a feeling we made a mistake in hiring. Now, Grandpa, remember, this is the first meal she's ever cooked in this house. Did you get the plow done for, Doc? Oh, si, señor. The tractor ran out of gas just before I did. Here's the hook, Joe. Oh, in China, this here's pepino. Grafton? Buenas noches. <laughs> I'll get some more butter. I'm glad the tractor ran out of gas. Don't smell like no hog jowls to me. Well, I still say it ain't easy if you've never done it before. Well, let's quit talking and get at it. Well, I just want to make sure that you understand that this is her first try. I understand if you'll get the god darn lid off it. <laughs> I hope it tastes better than what it looks. <laughs> I know it. I know it the minute I see them long red fingernails. I know she never cooked no hog jowls. Senor Grandpa. Now, look, I've had hog jowls cooked in all kinds of ways in my time. Grandpa. Burned, tough, fat, stringy, but never in all my born days have I ever tasted anything. This is the first one to taste as good as Granny used to cook. I mean, you really like it, Mr. McCoy? Is it really good, Grandpa? Well, <laughs> here, judge for yourself. Uh, all the same, no one cooks them hog jowls like a Swede. Hello, my sweet one. You be nice now, huh? Do as Tyna asks you. Oh, such big brown eyes you've got. <laughs> That's right, sweet little suit, noose. Now, let's see if you have been a good girl. Nothing! Oh, du din dumma ko, vad ska jag göra? Hur ska jag få om hjälp av dig? Vad måste man göra här? Whoa, whoa! You two girls having a little argument, are you? Stupid, stubborn, big-headed cow. I've tried everything. I petted her, I pleaded with her, I tried to reason with her, and what do I get? Nothing. The trouble is, you're only used to Swedish cows. 
Oh, I see. There is a difference with American cows? Oh, yeah, yeah, big difference. You see, with American cows, they don't give it. You got to take it. <laughs> oh, Luke, you are quite marvelous. You know how to do everything. Oh, I ain't all that smart. Luke, may I tell you something? Well, yeah, sure. I've been very happy the past few days. Happier than I've been for a long time. This farm, you, people. It's all been very good for me. Well, Tyna, you ain't thinking of leaving, are you? Well, I... Have we been working you too hard? Because if we have... Perhaps I've been working you too hard. It's just that... I think... I think... Oh, no, it's no use. Well, I've, uh, I've been doing a little thinking myself. What was you thinking? I think, why is it that a big, strong, handsome man like you are not married? Well, I was once. Since then, the right girl just ain't come along. What kind of a girl would be the right girl? Well, you see, it takes a special kind of a woman to marry a farmer. It's hard work. There ain't much money. A farmer's wife is... Well, she's got to take her pleasure in little things. Little things? Yeah. Like... Oh, like the sun setting over the barn, all red and gold. Baking a hot apple pie for the menfolk. Seeing the miracle of a newborn calf. I guess this all sounds kind of simple to you. <laughs> you know, Papini, it is kind of nice having a woman around the farm again, ain't it? <laughs> See? But I can't get used to walking into the barn and smelling perfume. But you gotta add me, it is an improvement. <laughs> I think I know. The perfume seems to agree with Senor Luke. <laughs> he just caught himself another snootful. Yeah, what do you mean, Luke? Oh, just milking the cow, Grandpa. <laughs> the it's empty. Tell you that boy's moonstruck. What do you think, is that serious? Well, he ain't mooned around like this since his first courting days. Afternoon. Howdy. Something I can do for you? This your place? Yeah. I'm uh, Charlie Martin, Martin Detective Agency. Well, that sounds like an interesting line of work. <laughs> yeah. Thought you might be able to help me. We're looking for a girl. She's uh, Swedish. About 25, five foot six. Here. Here's her picture. You seen that girl? No, I ain't never seen no one like this around here. What's she done, just in case I do? But I don't expect a will. Sophina, <laughs> ain't you got some eggs to deliver? Hey, what is it? Oh, see, chicken eggs to deliver them. <laughs> Thought you might recognize her. She's a movie star. A movie star? Uh, the police reported seeing a car like hers in the area. Uh, we're inquiring all around the neighborhood. Well, if I hear anything, I'll sure leave you know. Thank you. <laughs> See you around. So long. Movie star. Poor Luke. He's sitting on a cloud, and now I gotta go pull it out from under him. <laughs> Come in. I've been wanting to talk to you. Yeah, well, me too. When something important's happening, I figured it's all as best to bring it right out in the open. Oh, I agree. Just before you came in, I was writing it down in a letter. Perhaps you should read it for yourself. Well, you better read it. I didn't bring along my glasses. All right. 
Dear Grandpa, Luke and Peppino, by the time you read this letter, I'll be on my way back to Hollywood. You see, I'm not a housekeeper. I'm just an actress who was very mixed up, but not so much as before, thanks to you. Please forgive me all the trouble I caused. I'll remember you always. Love. Tyna. Well, now, I'm glad I gave you the chance to fess up. You knew? Of course I knowed. Does Luke know you're going away? I think Luke's falling in love with me, Grandpa. Well, what's your feelings about him? I'm afraid I'm getting too fond of him. Well, what is he to be afraid of? Because I don't think we're right for each other. Well, now, I'm glad you said that. I'd be mighty proud to have you in the family, but smorgasbord and hog jowls never mix. <laughs> You see, why don't you wait a, a day or so before you go and I'll see what I can do to handle things. Oh, thank you, Grandpa. You're so sweet. <laughs> I wish you were my real Grandpa. Well, I don't. No? No, it'd be too hard at my age to learn to talk Swedish. <laughs> Why don't you let Tyler make that sandwich for you? Well, I feel kind of funny about asking that. Well, why? That's her job, ain't it? Well, I used to think so, but I found out different. Well, what do you mean? Luke. She's a movie star. <laughs> she's a movie star? Oh, yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. She's a movie star, and I'm one of them astronauts. <laughs> I tell you, it's true, Luke. She told me so a chef. Grandpa, do you really mean this? You ain't just making it up. I ain't making up nothing. It's true. Why didn't she tell me? Oh, Luke, you got a lot of things to learn about women. She loves you, Luke. Well, if that don't beat all. And she loves me? She up and told me. She said, I'm fond of Luke, and that's probably Swedish for love. <laughs> Grandpa, I wonder what it'd be like to be married to a movie star. Mm -hmm. Do you think it'd work, Luke? Well, why not? As long as we're in love with each other. Well, maybe so. You might just take to that Hollywood living. <laughs> well, why'd we have to live in Hollywood? Well, Luke, you can't expect her to give up a job. Why, well, I bet the movie stars makes at least as much as 200 a week, maybe 250. <laughs> I don't know about Hollywood. You'd like it there, Luke. Don't have to get up till 7, 7.30, maybe. <laughs> and before you do anything else, well, you just put on them smoke glasses, you know. It makes everything look kind of green. And then there's other things, too. Them boiled shirts, you know, and, the, and your initials tattooed on the pockets of them. And the hair cuts once a week. And, and taking the two poodle dogs out for exercise every afternoon. Oh, wait a minute. Now, how do you know she's got two poodle dogs? Well, all movie stars has dogs to walk. The husbands have to do something for exercise. <laughs> well, I'll get all the exercise I need just working. Work? Well, you want to disgrace your wife? You look like she can't afford you. <laughs> well, a man's got to go to work sometimes. Why? She's making plenty. <laughs> well, well, what about me, Grandpa? I mean, what if I need some money? Well, just ask her first. Maybe she'd give me an allowance. <laughs> no, 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 no. Us McCoys has always prided ourselves on being the breadwinners. Well, what do you care? Ain't nobody gonna know about it. <laughs> well, I'll know about it. That's who'll know about it. <laughs> it just wouldn't work out. Luke. Look. Now, that little girl's in love with you. you well, you're just liable to break her heart. I know. <laughs> but it's better now than later. Well, maybe so, maybe so. I'll just have to let her down kind of easy-like. <laughs> hey, Grandpa, uh, maybe you better help me break it to her. Me? Oh, no, Luke. Now, no, this is your affair. And I never was one to miss it. <laughs> Tina, what I'm trying to tell you is, 
It just can't be. I know how you feel about me. It, right now, you think we was just made for each other. Well, believe it or not, we ain't. You... No, please. Please, let me finish. Dinah, you belong in Hollywood. Us McCoys, well, we believe in keeping a wife at home. You're probably right, Luke. I'm sorry to hear that. I know. I know you think that I'm the only man you'll ever love, but <laughs> if you just be patient, you'll probably get over me. I expect it'll take a long time, but someday somebody else is bound to come along. I don't know what to say. Now, don't start crying. I reckon you're too lumped up right now to see things clear, but someday, someday you'll thank me for this. Whatever you say, Luke. Well, I, uh, I reckon I better get back to my chores. You done good. The boy's gonna be all right now. Real good acting you done there. Almost trying. You didn't do any acting, Grandpa. Now, Tiny, you better stop that. You'll have me carrying empty milk pills, too. 